What are we seeing and what do we expect now that we're in this fourth quarter of, again, a year that is certainly not as good as what we've been accustomed to very recently, but pretty good? No, listen, it's been um, in some ways surprising that it's held up as well as it has. Recall that at Tulane, when I was there in uh, March, I, I talked about a market down 10 to 20 percent in global volumes. Now it's looking something like flat to down 10. As you said, fourth best year we'll see. And it's, look, it's still pretty good. And so, and, you know, a number of factors factor into that. But notwithstanding, you know, the China issues, Brexit, Hong Kong, the market is still a bit of a risk on market at this point. And yet it's largely domestic. I mean, I think, what, 10 of the top 10 deals were domestic M&A deals. We're not seeing as much cross-border. Is that that's fair correct. to say? No, that's, won't... that's exactly right. The top 10 deals were all, a couple of them were not in the U. Something like seven or eight of them were in North America, but a couple in like other Savick, countries were out. But right. they were domestic transactions. Cross-border volumes are the lowest we've seen in 15 years, about 20, a little under 25 percent of the market, um, for, for all the right reasons. You know, the trend against globalization, all the things we've seen. So it's not terribly surprising that way. Hostels are down, uh, understandably, given, the given how hard it is from a regulatory perspective to add a hostel component on top of that makes it pretty difficult. Um, but we're, you know, we're still seeing, and it's narrow, right? It's healthcare, tech, and industrial globally are driving volumes. That's it. Healthcare, tech, and industrial is and, sort of where uh, everything is. And over half the market is generated in North America. So it's a narrow market, unlike some others we've seen where it's been more braced, more broad-based, either geographically or in terms of well, industry. Well, we can all it's remember a time when, obviously, you'd see multinationals do big cross-borders, even hostile cross-borders. Is there an expectation that if China starts to get better, for example, if we get a, a, some sort of a deal today, uh, that you'll uh, start to see a pickup again? Or? You know, you could, but I still think there is a trend, you know, sort of against globalization broadly defined. We're in a more mercantile world than we've been. So do, you, do I think it recovers immediately? No. Do I think we could see more? There are still pockets, transatlantic, maybe a European tra champion looking into the U.S., that kind of stuff. But I think it's... Uh, at least for the time being, it's likely to remain a little depressed. And so how would you describe the mood in the, in the, you know, in the boards that, that you visit with if and when they are considering a deal? Management, for example, are they nervous at this point? Are they reluctant? No, I, look, I, I think that there is sort of some healthy concern about slowing GDP, about what does it really mean. Today we look better, you know, in the terms of the China and perhaps Brexit. Who knows whether that's true next week? So we've been kind of running up and down on that basis. Uh, look, I think there is a healthy skepticism about what, what the future portends. On the other hand, you know, there, there's still a uh, desire, as we can see, because the, trans you know, the, the deals are really driven by the mega transactions. Uh, there's still a desire to transact, and we're still seeing pretty good deals. You know, I've heard this refrain, and I want to get your take on it from a number of, uh, of my banking friends. Um, if you want to get something done, get it done pretty soon, because as Elizabeth Warren rises in the primaries and the possibility of Warren presidency becomes more pronounced, it's going to be even tougher to think about getting anything done. Fair or not fair? Uh, you know, look, I don't tend to, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, right, uh, coming up. I think that, you know, what's more on minds of boards and CEOs, as I see, is really macroeconomic and, and broader geopolitical issues and how that shakes out. The 2020 election is coming. But it's still, you know, we still got a ways to go before we ultimately see who the primary candidates are and then who actually, you know, runs against whom in, in, the, in the general election. So that's a little beyond. All right. Well, you've done your share of technology deals. Let me just throw another one at you. If I, if I come at a board and I'm like, I want to buy a company, but I need Chinese approval, does that board say, don't do it? Look, I think it's tough right now. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I do think that um, it's very, very, if it touches national security or critical infrastructure, very, very difficult. Think semiconductors. I think maybe the further you get away from that, it may be a little bit easier. But I think it, it's a brave soul right now to necessarily enter into that, that fray. Most of the boards would say, why are we doing I, this? I think, you know, look, because you look at the, the, just the duration, you could be stuck out two years. And what happens to the business? Business could deteriorate in that time frame. It's very difficult to hold a business in limbo and not be able to close and integrate and do all the things you want to do with the kind of time frames we're seeing. Um, all right, let's quickly hit activism, which continues, keeps you guys busy, certainly. Helps yes. pays the bills uh, yes. as well. Um, is that expected to continue? I mean, let's say I'm thinking right now we got uh, Marathon Petroleum's one where Elliot is. Uh, Emerson is another one, Debbie yeah. Shaw. Um, and there are others, uh, AT&T, of course. Does that continue? I think, look, it, it, 
It does. I don't see any reason why it necessarily goes away. I mean, as you know, it shifted years ago from governance to really valuation and some of the parts type analysis. You've seen the number of transactions that are announced that the active has come in and challenged, looking for a better price if they don't like the transaction, pushing against it. Um, I think as a matter of the AUM's up, the returns have been good, so I see no reason why activism Although it does decline. seem most, uh, most roads lead back to one firm. I mean, Elliott's doing more than seem, pretty much they, they anybody are, else. They are, they're very aggressive, un unequivocally. I, I'd also say, listen, tech disruption's driving deals. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sponsor money, you know, private equity money on the sidelines. So, you know, there are some positive factors. And frankly, you know, if, if, if we get some valuation reset right. downwards, that could you know, be helpful. After some period yeah, but of, we got low rates, Mark, so low, and yet that doesn't seem to be fueling. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not unhelpful, but you're right. It's not, um, but look, it's still a pretty good market, notwithstanding. Certainly better than I predicted in the beginning of the year. Right. Well, you tend to be, uh, I like to call you a realist, actually, <laughs> not quite selling as hard as some other people. Finally, I want to end on something that I've talked a bit about uh, of late, because it just comes up a lot. Uh, which is ESG. Yeah, sure. Um, and is it a real thing in the world you're dealing with? Does it come up in conversations about one company buying another? It does. I think it's more sort of advanced, the agenda in Europe, relative to the U.S., but it's clearly now coming to the forefront in the U.S. It is absolutely, look, if you're investing capital, and M&A is just a form of investment, you know, you, you're going to look at, at, at the ESG ramifications of that. I think it's still relatively early days here in this market, but it's, un it's definitely coming and it's, it's accelerating. We don't so have metrics, though, to measure. I mean, I would assume at some point you like to put out, give out your handouts, Listen, right? Uh, Is there a way to say, okay, you're going to buy company B, but let me tell you, they uh, rate poorly or they rate well on these various things. Look, I mean, I think all that stuff is, is, is coming right now. We don't quite have it yet to your point about having, you know, independent standards or scorecards that are truly independent or some independent body does it, but it's coming it's not going away, and companies are very wisely, I think, addressing it head on.